Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and in this video we're going to watch Transformers to see how accurate all the science and technology in this movie really are. It would not be a stretch to say that alien life has far more advanced technology if they were the ones that came here. Because any civilization that's capable of interplanetary travel has got a lot going for them. How did the Transformers know about Earth's internet? Did they ever reveal that? I mean, before you hack something, you first have to know how it works, otherwise there's no way for you to find loopholes. Now the second time they hack into the network on Air Force One is even more impressive because this time they upload a virus. So not only do the Decepticons know how the internet works, they know how to break it and bend it to their will. This is something that's so far beyond any AI that we have today. Let me tell you something, son. A driver don't pick the car. The car pick the driver. It's a mystical bond between man and machine. Truer words have never been spoken than by the great Bernie Mac himself. That one's my favorite. Drove all the way from Alabama. You can do that today. You're gonna piss a lot of people off and probably pay a monstrous fine, although this can be done. If you can produce a sound at the equal frequency to match the resonance of the glass that they use in those uh, car windshields, then you can shatter the glasses. If you've ever seen anyone shatter a wine glass with their voice, then it's the same principle. That person is matching the resonance frequency of that wine glass, and if you do that, it causes all the molecules to vibrate enough for the glass to shatter. And the only real lead we have so far is this sound. That's the signal that hacked our network. Signal analysis is really, really hard, and especially when the signal didn't even come from human technology. In this case, everyone in the room could hear the sound, which means the signal is going to be between 20 and 20,000 hertz, the range of human hearing. And the older you are, then the harder it becomes to actually hear lower frequencies, so if even the old people in those in that giant room could hear it, then it must be on the higher end of that range. Frequency and volume are not the same thing. It doesn't matter how loud a sound is, if it's not within the range of human hearing, then you won't be able to pick it up. No matter if you plug it into the world's loudest amplifier, you will never hear it. Pattern is learning. It's evolving on its own. And you need to move past Fourier transfers and, and start considering quantum mechanics. There is nothing on Earth that complex. What about an organism? A living organism, maybe some kind of DNA-based computer. I'm really impressed with this movie so far because she's absolutely correct. Well, so is he. There's nothing on Earth that complex. But Fourier transforms are what engineers use to analyze signals. I mean, they break down the signal question between space and time functions. A Fourier analysis would tell us amplitude, period, frequency, and just whatever else you wanted to know about the sound or the signal. An example of that would be breaking down different pitches in a musical note or a chord. So in this photo, for example, this is a C major piano chord, and the first three peaks on the left correspond to the fundamental frequencies of the C major chord, and those notes are C, E, and G, and those remaining peaks on the right side are high frequency overtones but with less intensity which means for the C major chord they're not as heard but they're still part of the signal. Laser marking technology is very cool and very real. The way this works is that the lasers are painting the target with a certain frequency that can be read by the Air Force planes flying up above, and this frequency will guide the missiles from the planes directly to the target. Even if the pilot can't see what's actually going on on the ground, the computer within the missiles is only going to hit what those lasers mark. I get that this scene is supposed to be the Autobots 
coming down to the Earth to save the day and those spaceships arrived to Earth exactly the way that we just saw, they would have killed a lot of people. <laughs> I mean, if an asteroid the size of those spaceships actually hit the Earth, the explosion would be way larger than what we just saw. You never hear about them crash landing anywhere else except for America. Why is this the only country that UFOs and aliens ever seem to land in? My name is Optimus Prime. We are autonomous robotic organisms from the planet Cybertron. But you can call us Autobots for short. Autobots. That is so cool! That's Optimus Prime! I haven't seen this scene in forever! Autobots stands for Autonomous Robots. I've seen these movies so many times and I've only just now made that connection. By definition from Ratchet, we already have Autobots on Earth because we have autonomous cars from Tesla, we have autonomous drones, we have autonomous trains. There are no Optimus Prime, but the world is heading in a more autonomous direction, not less, so by this definition we will have more Autobots in the future. These guys aren't made of any metal that we have on Earth, they're made of transformium. And I'm not sure about the glass or the tires that they transformed into or out of, but the bulk of them is transformium. And if it existed today, then it would be the most versatile weapon ever, because the metal regenerates, and after you launch it as a missile, it can just regrow or come back to itself and fly back to be launched again. With modern technology, a Pacific Rim type of robot could be built but it would be small and we can make cars like there's no tomorrow. The difficulty is going to be transitioning between the car and then the Pacific Rim type of robot. When you get really big and really heavy, it becomes so much harder to maneuver and that's one of the downfalls. It doesn't seem far fetched to say something small like the size of a book could reorient itself into a standing human like robot. The mass wouldn't change. And with all the moving parts, there's just, there's so much that could go wrong with Bumblebee. When he loses his legs, he can't transform back into the Camaro. He's just completely vulnerable. That means that the transformations have to be perfect every single time. Because he can't go back to being like half a car, right? Which also makes me wonder if he's damaged while he's in the Camaro state, can he transform into a damaged transformer? The reason that these haven't been built yet is because there's no public interest. Nobody would buy it because it'd be really expensive and as cool as these are, they don't actually solve any problems for us. And if you think about it from an investor's perspective, if we wanted to build a like Pacific Rim or transformer kind of robot, we could do it. It's just it would take millions of dollars, years of R&D. By the time you actually complete the project, there's no one to sell it to. Megatron crash landed before he could retrieve the cube. He accidentally activated his navigation system. <laughs> We know that Transformers are affected by extreme temperatures. The cold shuts them down and the heat kills them. Lennox and the military figured that out when they were firing the sable rounds at Scorponok in the desert. And then they studied his detached tail. However, this little guy didn't die from extreme heat and he wasn't frozen solid from any sort of lower temperatures. He died because an electric current was sent through him and that makes me wonder if they can kill the little guys with a strong enough electric shock, can't they damage the bigger ones with a higher voltage output? We saw it do some damage to Bumblebee when he was captured by Sector 7 and just brought in for freezing, I guess, like Megatron. So it does have some applications against Decepticons. I'm not saying it's going to straight kill them, but if you have an additional weapon in your armory that could potentially stun a larger Transformer with a high enough voltage output, why aren't they using it? Get in the chair, get in the chair, right? He's the army commander, please. How do we get the signal? How do we call the Air Force? Glenn? Can you hotwire this computer to transmit a tone through the radio? What good is that? Morse code. You can use this to transmit it through that. Okay, I'll do it! Very, very clever to use Morse code like that. It's been in use since the 1800s and it's still used today. You can send it through a telephone wire, just having lights flashing on and off, or the radio like they're about to do right here. And when all of the communications are being jammed by Decepticons, Morse code might actually work. In their current situation, all you need to send is dot 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 dash 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 dot dot dot, 
which is SOS. The universal code for we are going to die. Please save our souls. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay fresh and stay golden.